video, we are going to be talking about how you can eat carbohydrates without spiking your insulin and blood sugar. Now, if you guys have watched any of my other videos on reversing insulin resistance, you guys will know that carbohydrate rich foods are the ones that trigger the release of insulin and blood sugar the most. And it is because of these huge influxes in insulin always happening that our cells begin to resist the actions of insulin otherwise known as insulin resistance. If insulin resistance is left unaddressed, it will eventually lead to other diseases, including type two diabetes, heart disease, and PCOS for women. So the sooner you address it, the better. But even if it has progressed to other diseases, don't worry, it still can be reversed. But anyways, as I was saying, in general, if you're trying to reverse insulin resistance, it is best to keep your carbohydrate consumption low. When carbs are low, less insulin is needed, and that means that your cells can become more sensitive to insulin once again. But what if I told you there were some tricks you could do where you could still enjoy carbohydrate-rich foods and not see a huge spike in insulin and blood sugar? Have I got your attention? So in today's video, I'm going to give you three easy ways you can eat carbs without spiking your insulin. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna make one thing clear. Yes, the tips I'm gonna talk about in this video are effective, they do work, but there is still tremendous benefit to reducing carbohydrates overall. If you can reduce them for the most part and only implement these tips on the odd occasion that you do have a high carb meal, you are going to see the best results when it comes to reversing insulin resistance. But anyways, let's get into the three ways you can eat carbohydrates without spiking your insulin and your blood sugar. And make sure to stick around until the end because number three is really, really easy, but also really, really effective. Number one, cook and cool. When you cook and cool certain carbohydrate rich foods before eating them, including potatoes, rice, and oats, they have a significantly lower impact on blood sugar and insulin. We do not see the same response as we would if we ate those foods right after we cooked them while they were still hot. One study found that cooking rice, cooling it for 24 hours, and then reheating it significantly lowered the glycemic response when compared to cooked rice. Another study found similar results for potatoes. This study concluded that high glycemic and insulinemic features commonly associated with potato meals can be reduced by serving cold potato products. But what's going on here? How can the exact same foods have vastly different impacts on our blood sugar and our insulin simply by letting them cool down before we eat them? The reason is because when these foods cool, some of the starch they contain is converted to resistant starch. And what this means is that it is resistant to digestion. It passes through your digestive tract without being digested, the same way soluble fiber does. Because it is not being digested, it is not broken down into glucose and it does not need insulin. So because of this, it can help to improve insulin sensitivity and reverse insulin resistance. And this is really as simple as cooking your rice, your potatoes, your oats, and then letting them cool in the fridge overnight, reheating them before you're ready to eat them, and yeah, that's all you have to do. <laughs> Number two, eat carbs last. This strategy is also super easy to implement. All it requires is eating the carbohydrate-rich portion of your meal after the other foods that are on your plate. Eat your protein, your fat, and your non-starchy vegetables 
and then go for the starchy ones. So let's say you're having a steak, green beans, and mashed potatoes, for example. Eat the steak and the green beans first, and then have the potatoes. And you don't have to wait any significant amount of time in between. One study done on type 2 diabetics had participants eat the same meal three days in a row. On the first day, they ate the carbohydrate portion of the meal first, and then they ate the protein and the vegetable portion. On the second day, they ate the protein and the vegetables first, and then ate the carbs. And on the final day, they ate everything together. Insulin levels were tested before eating and after eating every 30 minutes for the following three hours. Insulin levels were significantly lower after the meal when the carbohydrate portion was eaten last. Now, of course, it gets a little bit more tricky if you're eating something like a pasta dish or a rice dish where everything is mixed together. If this is the situation that you're in, try having a salad or a protein-based appetizer first. Maybe some meatballs or some oysters. Even just some cheese and cold cuts. Just give yourself some protein, some fat, and or some fiber before you dig into the carbohydrates and your blood sugar and your insulin will thank you. Now, before we get into the final tip, I'm going to take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that allows you to build a beautiful website and run your business. Now look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've been using Squarespace for years, since I started my health coaching business, and I love it. I built my website entirely myself using one of their templates, which are really easy to customize. But over the last couple of months, I've been thinking about doing a bit of a rebrand. And I had a call with a company that does logos and websites, etc. I was talking to one guy from this company and he was asking me what I would be looking for in a new website. And they actually use Squarespace to host their websites that they design. And I was explaining to him that I wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to be clean looking and intuitive. I wanted it to get my messaging and the feel of my brand across. And he was like, look, your website is already doing all of those things. He was like, I don't want to dissuade you from working with us, but if we are going to make any changes, they're not going to be very major. <laughs> And I was like, oh, well then. <laughs> so needless to say, I didn't go ahead with that. I made a few tweaks to my website on my own and that was that. <laughs> but all of that is to say, you can create a beautiful and professional website all on your own with no experience in web design or anything. Squarespace offers so many features, such as the ability to run an online store and accept payments. You can build a mailing list and send out email blasts. You can accept donations and take bookings and all on one platform. If you want to check them out, head to squarespace.com forward slash health coach Kate. You can start a free trial, build your whole website without having to enter your credit card details or anything. So you can really get a sense of what it's all about and how things would go if you were to use them to build your website. And when you love it and decide to launch, you can use code health coach Kate to save 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the final tip. Number three, add vinegar. Having vinegar before or with your carbohydrates can help to significantly reduce the insulin and blood sugar response. This can look like taking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in water before your meal, or it can look like adding white vinegar to your potatoes. One of the studies we spoke about earlier when we were talking about the resistant starches actually had one group of people where the potatoes were not only cooked and cooled, but they also added vinegar as well. And that resulted in an even lower glycemic and insulinemic response than cooking and cooling alone. To demonstrate the impact that apple cider vinegar can have, one study done had participants take one and a half tablespoons two minutes before a high carb meal that included a bagel and orange juice. They found that the group that consumed the apple cider vinegar were up to 34% more insulin sensitive an hour after eating compared to the group that consumed the placebo. This meant their blood sugar was also lower and more stable. The reason that vinegar has this effect is because it increases the speed that our muscles can soak up glucose. Every time we eat, 
Carbohydrates are broken down into sugar and released into our bloodstream. Insulin is then released to bring the glucose from our bloodstream to our cells, mainly our muscle cells. Apple cider vinegar and vinegar in general helps to speed up this process. And like I said, all you have to do is dilute one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in water, drink it before you eat. If you aren't a fan of the taste of apple cider vinegar, you can add a pinch of, not a pinch, you can add a squirt of lemon juice or try putting it in sparkling water instead. Just stay away from apple cider vinegar supplements and from the gummies. They are not as effective as the liquid is. And also, like I said, adding vinegar to your meal can help as well. I talked earlier about having a salad as an appetizer. If you add some vinegar to that, that's gonna really help too. And you can use all of these tips either together or on their own. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. So to quickly recap, Number one, cook and cool. Number two, eat carbs last. And number three, add vinegar. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Like I said at the start, it can be a little bit daunting, the thought of any diet change and especially reducing carbohydrates. Like I said earlier as well though, it really is the most effective strategy if you can cut them down even a little bit. But even if you are still having them, using these tips can help a lot as well. And I have a bunch of other videos, honestly so many videos, on reversing insulin resistance and understanding it better that you might enjoy if you liked this one. I will link my insulin resistance playlist up above. And thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So if you did enjoy this video, I will link one video for reversing insulin resistance right here that you can check out next. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.